So without a doubt in my mind, RGB lights are going to be the future and the standard of lighting and filmmaking. They are incredibly flexible. They can adapt to any story and any scene that you're trying to tell. And in general, they solve a lot of headaches when you're on set. So today I'm gonna to be looking at the Cobor CL220R, which is their 220 watt RGB light. And we're gonna be shooting a couple scenes uh, really quickly and just showing you guys how I would be using an RGB light on set. So let's start with the first scene, which is gonna be like a interview style type of lighting setup. So this is the shot that we're gonna build from. We have a window right here for the natural light. This is with all the lights off, no house lights on, um, which is typically how you would shoot an interview. We're gonna supplement in that light using the Cobor CL220R. Camera is set to 4650 Kelvin F4.0. Now I'm at 800 ISO. I think what I wanna do is I'm going to ND down the camera because I wanna see a little bit uh, uh, outside. So this right here is four stops and four stop basically silhouetted. So I'm just actually gonna, four stop ND is not gonna cut it. It's gonna make the inside way too dark. Okay, yes, this is two stop ND. And now let's mess with this light. Let's first get this table out. Really important. So obviously this light right now is very warm. Uh, it is 2700 Kelvin from a previous shoot. 2700 Kelvin, it is at 100% power, which is probably too bright. And we're trying to go for this more natural look. We're just gonna use one light on an actual interview shoot. You can probably use way more lights than this. So first of all, take this way down and let's uh, set the color temperature to something closer to um, the outside daylight, which is probably around 56, maybe even 6,000. The outside daylight is looking a little warm. So I'm gonna warm up my light. I was at 6,000 Kelvin. This is now about 5,000. And what's cool about RGB lights is that you can set the green and red shift or green and magenta shift. The second one right here is a green and magenta shift or red shift. So if you go towards the green side, it'll make the light greener. If you go towards the opposite side, it'll make it more red or more magenta. So I'm gonna tilt it towards uh, green just because I think looking at the daylight coming out from the window, it looks a little bit greener. I don't have a color meter thing. I'm just gonna eye it which is kind of inaccurate, but gets the job done. Cool. Let's actually frame it up. That works, okay. So we have this nice light coming in from uh, the side right now. So it is set at 22% power and we are at a 4550 Kelvin and then with a negative three green shift. And the idea with this light right here is to make it look like a believable source of light that's coming in from this window that I'm, you know, I'm being actually lit by the window. So the light right now is about, it's about 60 degrees, maybe even 70 degrees away from me. That just helps getting that light on this side of the face, maybe ever so slightly wrapping around. If you want the light to be more frontal, what you would do is move it from, from like a 70 degree angle all the way to like a 45 degree angle, which I can do right now. Something like this would make the light wrap a little bit more around my face. So one of the strengths of the RGB lights is being able to one, set the color temperature, but two, also more importantly, to shift the magenta or the green, just so that it matches better with the ambient light in your environment. This looks nice, um, and this is at 10%. This would be like kind of like the final interview look, very fast interview look. Maybe I could add like a backlight right here, or like a side light, or anything like that if I had the space or the lights. So then this would be the interview style right here. So I would be talking to someone off camera, maybe right there, um, and this is the final look. Okay, next situation that we're going to try and recreate is this one. Um, now you might be thinking, whoa, what is this? Uh, um, this is based off of a shot that I saw from Sicario. It's one of the opening shots, opening scenes, where Emily Blunt's character is in a house and she walks up to this window that has like this red cloth over it. And as she walks towards the window, you see this red light washing over her face which is kind of sick. It was a cool motivated light source. And obviously the light on her face is not coming from the window. It's from some light source above her eyes that's shining down on her. I thought I would recreate something like that, but instead of the red cloth, which I don't have, uh, I'm using this incredibly pink backdrop with broad daylight coming in through the window. And that's sort of like giving me this, uh, this key. Okay, now that we have the context, this light is already doing a lot. Like it's bouncing a lot of that pink into my face. But we're going to enhance that with a RGB light. And again, this is where the light placement is. And so let's go set that up. 
Okay, cool. So we're gonna go back into the Cobor Studio app and we're going to change this from a CCT to a color. So I'm gonna pick a hue and conveniently there is already a pink setting. And so we're gonna push up the intensity all the way to 100%. And also if this light doesn't match exactly what we're going for, then we can do something like pick a color and then we're going to do the eyedropper down here actually and then we're going to point at a certain light source let's go with this uh kind of so i've repositioned the light in my shot to look more like something like this we are going to go to the eyedropper tool again and then we're going to hit retry and then we're going to pick this color right here and this should match a little bit better. I'm gonna bump up that saturation just a little bit. So this is completely off, no light whatsoever. And then we're going to slowly, slowly turn it up maybe to about 80% right here. And once you're in the eyedropper tool, you can slightly change the hue of the light source after you've captured it through the camera. And then over here, you see that I've already added plus 5% on the saturation and then intensity. I'm just going to play around with it until I find something that I think works. So maybe something like this, where the light color is gonna match that pink from that background right there. And so using RGB lights, this will get us way, way closer and much faster towards the color that we would want. Before, if you were to use just a bicolor or a regular fixed color temperature light, uh, you would have to use things like gels. And gels are just basically things that will change the color temperature of the light. You attach it over the light. For example, if I wanted the light to be green, you would have to tape a piece of green gel over the light and that would change the color. You can already kind of tell, like if I put it over the light source right there, you can see that it's turning it way green. So this is another way that I would use an RGB light as a motivated light source. All right, so this last scene that we're gonna do is a TV simulated lighting scene where let's say you have a character that's sitting in bed, watching TV, maybe it's at nighttime, maybe it's in the middle of the afternoon, but it's a dark room. And this lighting setup usually works much better if you are in a darker environment. So if I turn off, my house lights, this is what it kind of looks like. And then I believe on the camera, I also have a two stop ND filter on top of it just to uh, make the room a little bit darker. And it's set at 4650 Kelvin. And then we add in our own lights. And then this has a rectangular softbox on it versus the parabolic one, the circle one. My idea, my thought process is, well, if a TV is rectangular, I feel like the light source that is coming out of the light should also be in a rectangular-ish shape instead of like an oval shape. And on the softbox, I also have the honeycomb grid on it. I'm pretty sure the room is dark enough, but if not, I have set up the little black negative fill. That's gonna be probably closer to the side of my face. This light is positioned kind of off to the farther side of me. So I have a little bit more contrast when I actually turn it on and shine it on my face. It's gonna give me a little bit more contrast. Let's actually strike it right now. And we're gonna open the Cobor Studio app and then we're gonna go from the color tab into the effect tab right here. And and down here, you can set different lighting effects or lighting modes. There's a bunch over here. The one that I'm going to go to is the TV one. What's cool is that you can actually set a color that you want to be playing on the light itself. So if I turn off the house lights, let's go with a bluish color. And so you can actually set the, the hue, the precise hue and the saturation on the slider if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go into the color picker and maybe choose something like a very desaturated light blue. Or again, you can open your camera and choose a certain color if you wanted to. So I'm gonna go back to the color wheel, set it to something maybe like this, confirm. And right now it is at a rate of one, which is gonna be very slow. So if you want to have a faster flickering effect, you would just change the rate higher. And you can also change the intensity to be completely random, which I think works really well. The rate set it to be random, the intensity is set it to be random as well. And then that way you can get a very accurate lighting effect. Now we're gonna actually set up the shot and then see how this lighting works on my face. Cool, and this is how the shot looks like. And as you can see, if I look straight towards where my TV is, the light is not directly head on to me. I, like you can still get some shadow on this side of my face just so that we can get a little bit of contrast. And so this is like one of my favorite things about an RGB light is the way that it can change colors really quickly and also have these types of different effects that you can use really quickly. And what makes an RGB version of the LED lights really useful, you can go into the app and you can choose 
a randomized color. So you don't have to necessarily set this to like this blue color that I have right now. We're gonna hit random on the color. And now it's it's like I'm watching like Blade Runner or something uh, with this like pink. Yeah, and this is not bad. Like this is what you would typically see in like a movie or a show where the character is actually uh, watching television. Or, you know, if you had someone in a movie theater, this is kind of like how that would look like as well. I mean, not gonna lie, this looks pretty convincing. RGB lights, you're able to set a very specific color. And with these flickering effects, these different types of lighting effects that you can do within the light itself, it makes it very easy to simulate whatever type of uh, scenario that you're looking for. RGB lights definitely are gonna be the future of filmmaking because of how easily you're able to set up the light and get it running through your phone. Once these RGB lights reaches the same output as an HMI or like a tungsten light, I think productions in general are just gonna switch straight over to RGB lights. You don't like the light? Oh, you don't like it. Okay. All right, well, I think it's time to end the video then. Hit subscribe, leave a like. Let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments. I'm gonna tear down these lights before Wally eats me. We will see you guys in the next video.